shape talk number two today we're talking about the energy psychology of shape shifting spirit talks is something i've been wanting to do so this is just kind of the beginning i'm going to be doing more and more for many different things but most particularly today we are going to talk about that energy psychology for this summer let's say that again for this summer shape shifting program all right so yes i am terry Ann hyman and my focus really is to help you create a spiritual practice, and to really start to remove the imprints from your soul, from your path that get in your way of showing up. So that's kind of where the concept of this whole idea has come from. And that is the gist of what I do. As you guys know, I am the host of the Empowered Spirit Show. I love my podcast, so many great things. And I have been talking a lot about this energy of shape-shifting, the wild woman, the sorcerer, and how we can use these archetypes to help us in our life. So as we go to begin, I always like to start with the spirit to spirit moment. So let's just do that wherever you are, if you can, for a moment. I know we're always so busy. We don't want to stop, but this is where our power comes in. Finding something to light if you can. And just taking a moment as you're lighting the fire, notice where you are. Where is your mind this morning? How are you feeling? How's the body? What are you talking about? Where are you holding the stress? How is your spirit? Taking another deep inhale, calling in the element of air to cleanse the mind, to cleanse the space, calling in the element of water to move through all those emotions, to open the heart to your truth, your light. Calling in the element of earth to ground and to center. Taking a nice deep inhale, breathing up the body. Exhale, breathing all the way back down. Call all your energy in. I know it's Saturday morning. Call it in. Call in your spirit. Feel the alignment of your spirit right on top of the physical body. Take another deep inhale. And exhale, dropping right into the heart. Right in the very center of the heart, feel that connection. Your spirit and the greater spirit. Know that you're known, know that you're loved. Just feeling all this energy coming in for you. We just take the time to notice our spirit, to notice that connection. We call in our helpers. We call in our teachers. Right now, we'll call in that wild woman energy to ground us, to protect us, to inspire us to be centered and grounded, helping us to walk our path. And for this summer energy to open up to a deeper part, shape shift into a wildness that is already inside of you. Taking another deep inhale and exhale. Right here in the very center of your heart, take a moment and notice, how do you wanna show up this summer? Here we are in July, we still have July, August, right into September. How do you wanna show up? What do you wanna do? How do you wanna feel? What is that dream for your summer? Try something new, go somewhere different, feel good, meet somebody, feel good in your body. What is it for you? Open up that energy to its highest light. Can you feel the wild woman? Taking another deep inhale. And as you exhale, right to the heart, just send out that intention for you, for your summer. And take another deep inhale. And exhale all the way down, deep into the earth, grounding, centering. Bringing your awareness back, blinking the eyes open. And now what we want to do is take that intention. We want to do just a few tapping points. Bring it into the body. Right here at the eyebrows, holding that intention, how you want to feel. I want to be wild. On the cheeks, underneath the nose and chin, say your intentions. I want to be free. On the collarbone, I want to be happy. Go to the thymus. I want to be loved. Open up that thymus energy. Underneath the armpits, I am. And make a few more rounds. Eyebrows, 
cheeks, nose and chin, collarbone, thymus, armpits. Say your mantra for you, how you want to feel. I want to feel happy, excited. I am happy. I am excited. I am love. I am the wild woman of summer. One more time, tapping it into the body, releasing the stress and the cortisol from the amygdala of the brain. That's what our tapping does. I am. I am excited for summer. Coming to the karate chop point, choosing to love and accept yourself. Release the hands, take a breath, inhaling and exhaling. Now just taking a moment and noticing how you feel. Can you feel your energy lifted? Especially from where we started. Feel that for you. So often we get there, we feel it, and then what happens we lose it. We forget. There's that gap of energy. And we wonder, what happened? I want to be here, but yet I'm here. What am I doing? And then we start, the wheels start turning. So really, when we do this work, we're working in that gap. Because in that gap is where you can actually use what's going on with you and open up to the vision and shift, shape, shift. So my struggle, all right, I've talked about it. I'm an emotional eater all my life. I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know if it was an empath, but all my life in my family, I was the one always eating. And my mother took me to the diet doctor. <laughs> I went to a fat doctor. I got teased for that. I can laugh at it now, but there were too many tears growing up. I got diet pills every day. I'd have to, every week, once a week, go in, get your extra diet pills. You have to go stand on the scale in front of people. And then you'd get if you lost weight, you were a hero. But you know what? Sometimes we have plateau week. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we gain. And boy, I would just get reprimanded. I would just get criticized. I would get deprived. It was horrible. And so I became this like insecure yo-yo dieting, feeling deprived of everything in my life, not recognizing I had the emotional eating. And so through the work I do, through learning about my spirit, through learning about my empath energy, I teach empaths, right? I learned I was an emotional eater. And then I started to learn how I could actually control it and use it more to my benefit instead of shaming myself and being in that constant criticizing. So many of you know that my son got married. So happy to share about this. But what you probably didn't know was that it was the first time in 12 years that I actually had to see the ex and the girlfriend. We don't really see each other. We live on different parts of the country. He's in San Francisco. My son's wedding was out in Berkeley. So much fun. So excited. So yeah, early in the year, right? Back to the early, probably late winter, early spring, start thinking about what am I going to wear? What am I going to do? I got to lose weight. Got to lose weight. I put on weight during the winter. I admit I do, but I think it's kind of normal. But the key is to take it back off and to get back to where I feel good in myself, right? So I started struggling. I got to do it. Got to do it. I started looking for a dress and I'm hard to fit. I just know I am. I don't wear many fancy dresses. So I have a little struggle there. And I actually did start to get into some of that. I'm not good enough. I'm not going to like, whoa, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to look good. I'm never going to find a dress. How am I going to show up? And I even started getting into a little bit of that. Oh my God, I got to see the ex. I got to see him. I loved him. I did. He was a soulmate, but he was very narcissistic. He was. No surprise. I actually did a podcast about narcissistic empathic relationships. Perfect timing. It reminded me of all those things. All right. So I got rid of that energy. But still the idea of showing up. So I started tapping, all right, tapping on that emotional eating. Why am I eating? What am I doing? Why do I need this? Tap, eat for nutrition. That was a big one for me, not for emotions. Started tapping and actually switched up my exercise because I have a little foot issue. So I started swimming, loved the swimming, reminded me of being a kid. Started doing all this different stuff. It started really appreciating the parts of my body I do love, right? I love my hands. I love my feet, right? You know, my belly, ugh. Uh-oh, not supposed to really get there. And I really have to turn that around and tell myself at night, Ruby, I love you. Thank you. Because that is actually as an empath and intuitive, we do bring in a lot of energy in there. So instead of shaming it, I just started really appreciating it. Sure enough, as I get closer and closer to the wedding, several people said to me, wow, you look a little thinner. I'm like, really? No, you know, whatever. I'm the same. And I really wouldn't get on the scale. I just said, I refuse to get on the scale. It's too much stress, too much struggle. But I did show up and I did feel good. And I want to share two pictures and there's his beautiful wife now and here I am 
I think I look pretty good. Now, this wasn't the first picture. I had to delete many, but I did. I showed up. I wore this form-fitting dress. I had the heels on. I had this beautiful diamond necklace a friend loaned me, and I showed up. My hair was done. I had the gloss put in it. So very excited that I did. And then this one, I got to actually... This was me standing in front of his whole group of friends. He had so many friends. He had like 100 friends. Who has 100 friends, right? And then a little family sharing an amazing toast. They were laughing. We had so much fun. I was up there in front of everybody feeling really good. And that's the point. That's the point of showing up for who we are, showing up in what we are, and where we are, and really feeling good about ourselves. EFT helped me to do it. Visualizing the wild woman, all as I've been preparing this program, I am the wild woman. I do feel good. Pep talks to ourselves. This is what shape shifting is all about. This is the energy psychology of shape shifting. When we combine EFT, energy medicine, and visualization, shamanic tools, we can shift our perception of who we are, break through those imprints, and use these tools on a daily basis. They're easy. They're great. Thanks, Larry, for the hearts. They can help you get out of your own box. They can help you explore new aspects of yourself, whether it's just feeling good about your body, whether it's taking a new exercise class, whether it's getting out and doing something exciting, it can help you to shift. So legend tells us like before time, like, like the indigenous people, they used images, they use the animal instincts, they use this kind of things to help them come into who they were. So even before we had words, we had these images, we had these thoughts, we had these archetypes, all right? Because that is what the wild woman is. She is an archetype. She's an archetype to help you open up to a deeper part of who you are. Now, the summer energy is all about divine feminine. Everything is growing, right? Spring, we're busy planting, planting. Summer is sit back. Let the divine feminine arise. What is the feminine? It's not that push, push, push. It's the receive. Have fun. Enjoy your life. Let things birth. Let things grow. Let things open up. So the idea of the divine feminine with that wild woman is women, we need this to come forward. We need to feel that power in a feminine way, in a feminine way. That's what we can help us to really understand more about our life, have patience with ourselves, and to grow. So when we talk about the idea of shape-shifting, I know a lot of legends, and if you've ever watched any of the Native American movies, or I did a lot of studies on it, you will see like, all right, somebody's like chasing somebody, and all of a sudden there's a deer that jumps away. So many people think, oh, we actually have to change the physical form. Well, okay, yes, I do believe that's possible, but I know for me, I went from feeling yuck, 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 to feeling that picture of me. That was the image I wanted to show up in. Isn't that shape-shifting? I really believe it is. So when we combine the tools, energy psychology, when we use that archetypal energy, the visualizations, tapping is a big part of it. Tapping works on the amygdala of the brain. It lowers cortisol. When we lower the cortisol, we become present rather than me, my situation showing up with all that energy from the divorce. That was like 30 something years ago. Well, my son's 35. That was like 20 something years ago. I could have brought all that energy with me. I'm not good enough. He cheated on me. He left me. She's younger. I don't think she's cuter. She's with him, not me. I could have brought all that, carried it right into the wedding. Not being able to appreciate my children, not being able to appreciate. And they reflected to me how much I had changed, how much I had grown. My son asked me to walk him down the aisle. How fantastic is that? I had to sit in front of his dad <laughs> once I got there. Oh, well. The dad wouldn't even talk to me. I went over. Hi, hi, y'all. Hi, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. My daughter struggled. We talked about it. She's working on it. She'll be great. She's eloping next week. I'm excited for that. I helped her. I won't be there, but she's eloping. She's in VC. But a lot of it does have to do with the way in which I showed up. The way in which I showed up for them was reflected right back at me. So I walked that wild woman path even stronger. I really did. And you could do the same. Shape-shifting is about changing your consciousness of what you believe. I've been reading a great book. Really, I would highly recommend it for this as well. It's one of Don Miguel's about all those thoughts we're conditioned to believe. We don't have to believe it. We're stories. 
They're stories we make up. We can choose to believe them or not. Shape-shifting will help you get that out. The tapping will help you remove those imprints. And the visualization is going to help direct your path. It is the way in which we can go about our lives in a whole different way, especially for the summer. Why not? We're such a busy life, right? So why not for the summer? Take some time. Take these eight weeks and really change, really shift, really stretch out is what I was going to say, because in shape shifting, you can actually bend time, stretch out this summer energy of being outside, right? The wild woman archetype, she reminds us that deep inside of you are your wishes and your desires. What are those? What was that intention you set? Don't you want to get there? I know I did. I know I did not want to show up feeling less than who I was. I wanted to stand in my truth and I did. So much fun given that speech. All I did was take a pause, but it was the perfect pause. And it was long and everybody was like, oh my God, what's she going to say about Alex, right? And, the, and his wife now, she like laughed, like knowing like, oh my God, here it comes. I showed up as who I was because I felt good about who I was. And I let that wild woman guide me all the way through. And it's possible for you. Maybe your wild woman doesn't look like me. That's okay. We don't want it to. We all have that within us. How can you show up this summer in that way? So I did want to go over the program details. I'm going to share again. This time it should be a little easier. There we go. Love your body. No matter what shape you are, no matter how many wrinkles you have, no matter what, love your body. That is really what's important. So it is an eight-week online program, shape-shifting your body, your mind, your spirit, and your emotions. Together, all of us, we're going to look at our fears that are causing you to break your diet, to not keep the agreements with yourself, that makes you overeat, that then starts all that yo-yoing and all that mental chatter. So the lesson, first lesson is we're going to do a little vision questing. We're going to use some of the shamanic tools to open up, to notice what you notice about yourself. There's some questionnaires, some question, some question forms I'm going to send out so that you can really get in there deep and look at what it is for you. Then we're going to tame the wind. The wind is the air, our mind. We're going to start working with tapping, working with the habits of the mind, what you're telling yourself and what's really not true. Then we're going to go into the gut instincts, all right? Our gut is so important. I am going to share some of my great morning routines, sea moss, what I do, and how you can take some of these into you to set up your body, alkaline it, to set it up good for the day, and we'll really get into some of the food issues. Self-love, beliefs, beauty, and baths. We're going to really go deeper about loving ourselves and some of the rituals I was talking about, like rubbing with oils and Ayurvedic technique and taking those long baths and really soaking away and taking time for yourself. I know I kind of started skimping on taking time for me. I've actually started putting on a little makeup again, just dressing up a little bit and feeling very lively. We don't have to always wear makeup, but we can make ourselves feel better. And that's what this is about. Then we're going to kind of go a little deeper again, the sorcerer, the destructive patterns, all right? Like how we start on something, but we don't hold that agreement with ourselves. That's a little bit of the deeper work we're going to do there. And then we're going to pull it all together and really have all these tools together to be that radiant wild woman. Very good, very planned. We want to unveil the wild woman in you and using the archetypes of the shaman energy, we're going to actually be working with the mystical shaman oracle cards. We have to, I've created a spread just for us for this. So here's the gist of it. Lose the weight of fear. Shed the heaviness of stress. Gain the confidence of your wildness and joy. Shape your body, mind, spirit, and emotions. Shift the way you show up so that you can live your dreams. That's it. That's what we're doing. The journey, eight weeks, six lessons. We have some integration week. Live teaching, supplemental videos, audios, workbooks, all of this. How-to demos. I mean, make a lot of how-to demos. We begin July 8th. We go through August 29th. There is a week in there, August 1st. I'll be in Mexico, so we will have an integration week. And there is a VIP option for personal one-on-one -on -one mentoring to really get deep into what you need to learn. So we will be doing that. And if you sign up now, you're going to get a Wild Woman Mojo bag. These are things that are going to help supplement what we're doing, your very own. Here's the dates, video included, replays included, testimonials. We'll talk about that in a minute. Well, let's talk about that. Testimonials. So I did a, a program last season. I do one every season. This was monetizing your energy. And same idea. We worked on really stopping the energy drains, noticing what your empath energy is, how you take on energy. Great results. 
One of the participants started to notice how she was always taking on energy and it was sitting in her gut, giving her stomach aches, and then it would go to her head, giving her headaches. Once she started realizing she was pulling it all in, I started helping her use tools to clear it out. So then she was able to catch herself like, okay, wait a minute, this is just excess energy and prevent the headaches. Because you know what? That polyvagal nerve, it runs down. We start getting our nerves frayed. It hits our stomach, affects our mind. So this is what we're going to work on. We're going to do the guashes too. I'm going to show you how to use the guashes. The guashes are for the lymphatic drainage as well as the polyvagal system. So we're going to be doing that as well. Another client, she actually came to me and did the program because she was really sabotaging herself because she was drinking wine a lot. It wasn't like she was alcoholic, but she was drinking wine, just kind of gray area drinking. Maybe she looked at herself that way. Maybe others did, but she really just wanted to kind of cut it out. And so we started doing the same work. And then she started realizing like through the tapping, especially like the less she took on a people's energy, then she didn't really need to go for that afternoon drink. And instead she started getting outside more. And then soon enough, she started recognizing like she had totally forgotten about that afternoon wine or that like five o'clock cocktail. She started drinking kombucha, one of the things I taught her about, the sea moss. These are the things we're going to do. And these are the results that you can get as well. They're very powerful. We all have different things, different reasons we want to do this. So what are those things that you want to shift and change for yourself? All right, so let's go back here. And let me tell you about the options that you could do. We have the group program. It's only $247. All right, it's only two forty-seven, and I've actually made a group payment. If you a two-payment plan, if you want to do it that way, one twenty-nine a month, you can do that. There's a link for that. If you want to go the VIP route, you could do that as well. Seven forty-nine, you get six private sessions with me, virtual one-on-one, -on -one, really worth it compared to what my normal programs are. Or you could do a three-payment option of two fifty-seven. The choice is yours. Sign up now, and you're gonna get a beautiful Mojo bag sent to you. If you don't have my book, you'll also get my book. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be working with the shaman cards. They're also inspiration for this program. It is going to be a lot of fun. And today, as a special bonus, I am offering an extra virtual one-on-one -on -one session with me. So you can go ahead, get signed up. We can look at what it is so that I can hold you accountable to the agreements you want to make with yourself. I truly believe the agreements we make with ourselves are the strongest ones. And that we can do. We really can with support, with teachings, with really these spiritual tools, intuitive tools and the tapping. We really can make those agreements. So that's my program. That's the talk. I have to say, I walk my talk. If you want to be, you know, if you want a perfect spiritual teacher, that's not me. I live my, my experiences and I do share them with you. I really do. So I'm going to take a pause for a moment here and see if anybody has any questions. So before we end, I'd like to do a reading and I did go ahead and draw some cards. And again, I'm working from these beautiful mystical shaman oracle cards, Colette Baron Reed and Alberto Villardo and his wife, Marcella Lobos, beautiful cards. I haven't used them in a while. I thought, wow, these are perfect. I love my cards, but we're going to use these. So I did create a spread for our class and the spread is going to be the issue. All right. The beliefs you're telling yourself about this. And then we're going to talk about next step. So as I went to draw the cards today, the first card that came up is the hunter. So the hunter is about really pushing out and really walking that path for you. All right. It really is. Look at the beauty of it. Look at the bear. Look at the horns, the colors. And so as we look to what they say in the book, this is about relying on your own skills to transverse the thick forest you're in to reach your destination. You need to follow the tracks left by spirit to claim your bounty, which is being prepared and offered to you. So as you set your intention for this class, you set that vision in our vision quest, the hunter card comes in to really say, okay, now let's follow that energy. Let's really stick to our path. Do not follow the map drawn by others as it will not lead you your truth. Become your map maker. Find your internal compass and use all your senses, including your common sense, to get to that vision that you set for yourself. Now, the thing that crosses us and we start to talk about, oh, our beliefs and what we really think about ourselves, which isn't true. It's just the stories we make up is the crow. Look at that crow. 
I actually saw a crow this morning and I snuck up on the crow. He didn't see me, which is very interesting. He was watching something else. But the crow is an invitation to speak the truth and practice truth. Eventually, everything you say becomes true. Now, because it was reversed in the drawing, the medicine is to be true to your word. And that's the agreements we want to keep with ourselves. All right. Sometimes in coral rise, we convince ourselves that what we're doing is right. But while we may not be in that higher realm of absolute, we may not be really, really walking the talk we speak. Crow comes in to remind us, walk your talk, practice your truth. Let it be a way in which you can hold that agreement. Have that call remind you. And then at the top was the next step, which is the staff. Look at that, like a tall neck of a giraffe, the staff. So the staff is reminding you to hold the power, to really maintain that right course of action, finding your balance, walking in that direction, to know how to flow easily between the polarities. And I like that because we've got the shape shifting, which is kind of our spiritual realm. And then we've got our everyday path. So it helps you to live both of those, to connect that with you, to trust your inner wisdom and take the first step on a journey that your heart has embarked on and that you've set that energy out there for. Use the power of the staff to unite what appears to be divided. So that would be the gap. Finding that truth, walking your talk. Beautiful cards, the hunter, the mm -hmm. crow, and the staff. Yeah. Should we get those card that those cards for this um course? You can. You can get the cards for the course. You can. They are yeah. beautiful. You can find them on Amazon or, you know, I can definitely send you a link for that. I've actually been reading a book called, I haven't read it in 12, 20, maybe 20 years, 15 years, called The Sorcerer's Way, The Sorcerer's Crossing. Really good okay. tune. It talks about the Don Miguel, the Carlo Castanato, the way in which we can really work with the energy. It's very fascinating. But that's been a really good help for me too. And I do love the cards. They're, they're really, they're a lot of fun and a lot of beauty. Yeah. For what sure. are What are the names of the cards? The cards are called the mystical shaman. Mystical shaman and the need to write down the, the name of the, Yeah, the name I'll of the send book. that out. I'll, I'll definitely have it in there. But the mystical shaman, I can send you a link for that. And then the book, I'm trying to decide between that book and the um, the Don Miguel book. I almost feel like the Don Miguel book, um, Wisdom of the, what is that one called? The one I'm reading now. It's their third, it's the third one I've been reading, The Voice of Knowledge because it really gets into how we believe the thoughts about ourselves. So I may actually have us read that one instead, you know, okay. and just make points, references to it. Not that we'll have a book club, but make references. Right. To They'll let us know. Yeah, Definitely. we'll let yeah. you know for sure. Yeah, I'm finalizing all my details as we okay. speak. <laughs> all right. Well, all right, so as we go to close, whether or not anybody who's watching this later chooses to join, I hope that you have learned something today. And let's just go to close our energy. Taking a nice deep inhale, exhaling all the way down deep into the earth. Just taking a moment of awareness, gratitude to the spirit, greater spirit, gratitude for showing up for you today. Inhaling and exhaling. We'll add one last gratitude, gratitude to the wild woman within. Inhaling and exhaling all the way down, grounding, returning to that intention you set for your summer. Just exhaling all around you, setting the energy. Grounding with Mother Earth, bringing the awareness back, coming back. All right, have a great day to your spirit. Reach out if you have questions.